testimony that starts off with a statement? Proud of our guys. You know, they, I, I thought the way we came out in that first half really set the tone for the game. You know, I thought we came out uh, really focused on the defensive end. Uh, North Dakota runs great stuff offensively. They have a lot of talented guys. You know, they put five guys out there on the court who can all make threes. So it puts your defense at a disadvantage a lot of times. And, you know, I think our defensive intensity and focus, holding them to 20 points, and, uh, you know, I think their shooting percentage was pretty low in that first half, allowed us to get that separation. And then the second half was really back and forth. Uh, North Dakota did a great job making some adjustments, um, you know, and, and we got to clean some things up by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Brian Scott, Daniel Gibson, you want to start us off? Yeah, um, I guess kind of what do you think changed there at the end of the first half to go on that big run to kind of pull away with it before halftime? I, I think it was getting stops. You know, uh, I, I really feel like if we can, you know, get stops and rebound the ball with this team that, you know, we have the ability to push the ball in transition and, and be able to kind of get on 6-0, 7-0, 8-0 runs in a hurry that can cause some separation throughout games. But the biggest thing is, is to be able to get those defensive stops and we're able to get some uh, some steals and some turnovers and be able to create our offense from our defense. And then also, how do you think the team was able to shoot so well from three? Well, I'm really proud of the guys, how they shared the ball. You know, we had 19 assists, and, you know, I don't remember too many contested uh, threes. So, you know, I, I think, you know, continuing to get them uh, to make the extra pass, to pass up good shots, to get great shots. Um, and we got a bunch of unselfish guys in the locker room. So I think that's one of our team's strengths for sure. Thanks. Uh, Brian Scott, Daniel Gibson. Uh, Brian, you said you talked about their effort, just, uh, their overall energy. How happy were you there with their energy today? Yeah, no, I, I, I was very pleased with their energy. Uh, one o'clock game, you know, in the middle of the week after you know having a game canceled and having you know three practices in a row. Uh, you know, as a coach, you're always worried about how your team's going to come out. And like I said, I thought that first half our guys were really focused and locked in. He had a lot of great offensive performances, but Lance really made some big shots to end some of their runs. How happy were you with his aggressiveness today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Lance had some great practices leading up to this game. Uh, it was the best he's practiced probably this year. Um, and I, he had a different type of balance, different type of energy to him, and, and that translates. And, you know, the way he played today was the way he's been practicing in the past 48 hours. So, um, you know, I, I think Lance is still growing and, and still becoming better, and uh, we just need him, you know, to kind of keep him on the rise right now. Did you manage this game any differently, uh, knowing there's another game tomorrow? Uh, not, not really, not really. Um, you know, uh, we got to play a lot of different guys, but we need to continue to, you know, grow our depth. I'm glad Siku got to play some meaningful, meaningful minutes. I thought Jacoby did a great job and really contributed. Uh, and, and, you know, we just got to continue to add to our bench. Rebracha is a real good jump shooter. If you don't go out and guard him, you guys seem like you were pretty physical with him. Uh, how happy were you with the defense on him, making someone else beat you? Yeah, Rabacha, I mean, he's a tough cover. I mean, he still went five for six, uh, you know, 12 points, two assists, and, and you know, we, we tried to take him away. And like I said, I think before, it, you can't just stop him. You just got to try to make things difficult for him. So uh, it's a start. Uh, you know, we got to clean some things up after we watch the game and, and probably do a better job all, all, overall uh, on him and the rest of the guys, though. Thank you. Adam King. Hey, Coach, um, uh, you guys haven't started 4-0 in a long time in this program, and uh, I'm just curious if that's kind of showing up in the locker room or, or, you know, what that means to you guys and how you build on that. Yeah, we haven't talked about, you know, being 3-0 and or being 4-0 uh, with our guys. I mean, we've talked about winning, uh, and I think we have a locker room full of winners. Um, you know, I think even if we, you know, lose a game, um, our locker room is still going to be confident. We're still going to be positive. They're still going to believe in each other. You know, I think it's more about how we play. You know, we want to continue to play the right way and, you know, kind of hold ourselves to our own standard, how we play and how we execute and, and make sure we're doing things that we think will translate to success, you know, come February and March. You know, just kind of a, a question on the playing the back-to-back -back on the same day, or on back-to-back -back days, I apologize. 
how do you guys go about preparing for that other than just, you know, watching film? Is there anything you have to do specific? No, I mean, it's the first time for us as a staff, you know, and I think it's going to be really valuable, you know, when we play Evansville and, and, and moving forward, um, you know. So, yeah, obviously breaking down film, trying to clean up some things, trying to see the adjustments North Dakota made in the second half and how they might attack us tomorrow um, and, and some things that we can do better. And then just making sure our guys are as fresh as possible for the 3 o'clock start tomorrow. Uh, Coach, when, when you look at this squad, they seem to be making their own energy and feeding off of each other so well. Is that something you guys talk about without their, because of the lack of fans at the Van Terra Center? Yeah, definitely. We've talked about it uh, you know, since July, August with this group. Just I, I've always felt the teams that bring the most energy and have the greatest leadership and communication are going to have a lot of success this year because you can create your own environment. You can create your own energy. And our bench has been unbelievable uh, in doing that. You know, When the starters come out, they're up uh, clapping and cheering, and, and um, you know, so I've been really pleased with with our bench uh, in terms of what they bring to the game, not the basketball part, but just the atmosphere and the culture part of it. Uh, I'm curious, and, and I don't want to word this the wrong way. You guys started off kind of struggling at the beginning of last season as you took over, but you really started to to get going towards the end of the season. Are you? Is it easier to coach off of winning? You know, being four and zero is that easier than it was when you guys were, were, were losing at the beginning of last season, or is there more to, to grow on when you're losing? Well, we want to learn from winning. I, I said that last year, and I, I told this group, we want to be able to learn from winning. You know, win or lose, we break down every single game the same with our guys, uh, and we try to separate the result from how we played. Um, you know, obviously, I think. Uh, you know, if you go on a five or six game losing streak, then, you know, the locker room, you know, environment might be not as positive or not as upbeat as it would be if you go on a five or six game winning streak. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that this group is continuing to learn, you know, almost daily, basically, whether we win or lose. Uh, and that's what, you know, I think will provide success for us later in the season, just because our practices, you know, every single day are opportunities for us to get better. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks, Sam. Matt Barney. Coach Lance has been averaging probably about a, a charge a game, maybe a little bit more. Um, I know he was good at that last year as well, but how big is it to have a player that's willing to take the body like he is? Yeah, it, it's huge. I mean, uh, taking charges is, is a selfless act, um, and it, it's a huge momentum play for your team and Lance gives us his body continually not just with charges for diving on the floor for loose balls you know trying to block out bigger guys so you know Lance is obviously uh, you know one of the toughest kids and he wants to win and, and taking charges is, is part of winning and that's what he understands. Marcus has been struggling to score in the first half of games this season uh, you know not for like crying but what can you attribute to his struggles in scoring in the first half specifically uh, this season? Um, you know, I think the good thing is Marcus is getting to his spots. You know, I don't think he's struggled to make the plays he needs to play. You know, obviously he, he's missing some finishes or some jump hooks, but Marcus puts in the work every single day. I mean, he's done that since he's been a Saluki. Um, and, you know, I, the good thing is, is maybe if you're missing some shots or you, you had a couple bad games, you know, good games are coming up really soon. And, you know, we have all the confidence in the world in Marcus. And, um, you know, he got great looks today. And, you know, hopefully he'll be able to get some of those looks tomorrow. On the flip side of that, uh, you had not one but three guys able to fill in with Ben, Lance, and Trent getting into double digits and uh, looking good from all over the court. Uh, how comforting is it to you to know that you don't need to lean on Marcus as heavily as you did maybe last season to make sure that you can win a game? Yeah, I, I think depth is huge, and especially obviously in this year, not knowing uh, week to week, you know, what guys you might have on the team. But, you know, I just think um, Trent, Lance, Ben, Steven, Anthony, Kyler, Jacoby, it's just, it's not, you know, just Marcus, you know, it, it's, it's our whole team, and we have multiple guys that can make plays, multiple guys who can guard different positions. So, you know, we're trying to continue to build a versatile team uh, who can all pass, shoot, and dribble. Last one for me, Coach. Uh, Kyler really had a big game today. Uh, nine points, I think it was, uh, which is a career high. I know it's only his fourth career game, but 
just seemed to really do well today. How big of a step did he take in your eyes? Yeah, I think he's getting better every single day. I, I said that before the season. I think Kyler's best basketball is way ahead of him, and I think the more game reps he gets, the more confident he's going to get as a, as a player. Um, you know, uh, he knows he belongs there, and not only does he belong, but he can excel. And, you know, I just think throughout the season, he's going to get more and more comfortable and, and be able to be a big piece for us.